Yo, what's up guys? Bill here, Classic Rock and Metal Review. Time for another bootleg update. Let's see what's popping out of Japan. This time around, 42 titles to tell you about. And these are just what I consider the cream of the crop. Almost all soundboard quality recordings. That's really all I deal with nowadays. So I'm not against audience stuff. I just don't have a need for it. There's so much soundboard stuff out nowadays. And there might be one or two soundboard audience matrix items in here however i think this is almost all soundboard quality stuff all right so that goes without saying and also everything here silver press unless noted otherwise of course always check into the specs i could get something wrong here and there so all right nursing a little head cold ah, summer cold man they suck the worst all right, enough of that bullshit. Yeah, and at the end, show you some of the stuff I've been listening to. Some of these are pickups I don't even think I, I showed you guys that I got yet. I'm trying to refrain from showing you anything until I actually hear it to have a comment on it. You know, just showing you what I got with no commentary is kind of stupid. So let's let's just go with the, uh, and that goes for everything, even basic releases. We do a monthly haul. That'll probably be coming up next. I'm only going to show you stuff I've listened to. I have multiple things I haven't shown you yet, and that's why. So let's get it kicking with the new releases. And here's a great one right off the bat. Rainbow Osaka 1976 Soundboard Archives, double CD, Rising Arrows, your label. This is from November 8th and 9th. Now this one is one of those soundboard audience matrixes. Appears to be mostly soundboard though, best I could gather. Another cool rainbow title, Atlanta 1978 Reel to Reel. Direct transfer. This is at the Omni, well-known gig from Atlanta, Georgia, June 24th, 1978. 55-minute broadcast, radio broadcast this is what you get here. Again, a rising arrow is the label. A couple from Dio. These are also uh, represses as best as I can tell. Definitive Evil. It's two CDRs on Shades. We're at La Zenith in Paris, France, November 27th, 1987. The Dream Evil Tour. Another Shades title from Dio, Atlanta 1990, Westwood One broadcast, a single CDR in that guy from the Civic Center in Atlanta from October 2nd of 1990. Here's an interesting title, Metallica and Megadeth called Zwali Collection, Ardshock Festival, another Shades title. We're at the Netherlands, February 8th, 1987, and then May 29th, 1988. You get the Metallica show from 87, 62 minutes on disc one, and 34 minutes of Megadeth's show from 1988 at this Ardshock Festival, Zwali, Netherlands. Two CDRs with that guy, but pretty cool title, Soundboards. Robert Plant, Moonlight in Texas, two CDRs, Trials Your Label, disc one, Austin, Texas, September 21st of 83, disc two, the continuation of that Austin show from 83, and then six songs from Houston from June 22nd of 85. So pretty cool plant solo title there. Eric Clapton, a couple really notable titles. Pretty cool stuff here. Columbus 1974, St. John Arena, Ohio, 4th of July, 74. Beano's the label, 2CD, Upgrade they're calling it, 461 Ocean Boulevard tour. And also from Eric, Chicago 1985 Soundboard Master, Hoffman Estates, Illinois. This one, July 5th, an upgrade, two CDs, also on Bino. Now this month actually features a lot of sort of represses, all right? They've been out before just being put out again. Second press, third press, what have you. Some of them upgrades. This would be one of them. Blue Murder, Definitive Nippon Sinancon, 1989, DAT Master, we're at Tokyo, August 25th, 1989. This one, this version remastered by Graf Zeppelin. Two CDs on Zodiac, so Silver Press, of course. Uh, the original trio here of Sykes, Carmine and Peace, and Tony Franklin on bass. I happen to have the original on this, which I only got not too long ago. And I think I've only heard it once. I might have started into it a second time. I need to get back to it. I wasn't loving the sound quality of it uh, in my car. And I think it was better in my house, but I didn't get too far into that second lesson. So I, did, I need to get back to this. I wasn't too impressed with what I was looking forward to, where they're, you know, songs from their old bands. Still the Night, 
and uh, Purple Haze, I guess, Hot Legs. I was really looking forward to those songs, and they, they, were, they were okay, but it wasn't what I was hoping for, I guess. So uh, I'm not giving up on it. I just need to get back to it. So this new Graf Zeppelin remaster, I'm sure, is going to be good. Uh, Hendrix title, the unreleased Electric Ladyland Studio Sessions from 1970, fourth album of Jimmy's. These are sessions from June to August of 1970, and no label on this one. It's three CDs. A good one there for Hendrix fans. Three titles from Sabbath I already talked about and showed you is the Forbidden Rough Mix featuring Tony Martin. I'm not sure why they needed to put that on the title, but this is something that came out about 20 years ago uh, on bootleg. So here's a no label new version of it. Or actually, sorry, shades on this label and one bonus track. So otherwise, it's the same uh, demos from probably a Cozy Pow tape from about 2001, 2002 was the original. So a new version of that out. Studio Outtakes 1969, of course, double CD on Zodiac, big news for Sabbath heads. You get what sound like the entire The Rebel sessions and the Evil Woman sessions on disc one, some bonus tracks at the end, and then first album sessions on disc two. I'd show it to you, it's in my car. And also, new from Sabbath, of course, Studio Outtakes 1970, 1971, another two CDs on Zodiac, Paranoid and Master of Reality sessions on this one. And looking forward to this guy. The 1969 outtakes are great. For Sabbath junkies only, I would say, though. Alice Cooper, El Paso, 1980. Pre-broadcast master, full title there. Texas, June 4th, 1980 on Shades. It's two CDRs, 111 minutes, and six pretty tasty-looking bonus tracks on that. Aerosmith Saratoga Springs 2001 Soundboard. We're at the Performing Arts Center, Saratoga Springs, New York, June 8th, 2001. Again, shades here for two CDRs. This, another soundboard audience matrix on this one. Kiss, we got three titles here and one coming up later. Complete Destroyer Sessions 1975-1976. Considered an upgrade on Zodiac single CD on that one. Fort Worth 1977 soundboard, two CDs on Zodiac. I haven't seen the words upgrade for this one specifically, but they did put this out before. I do have the original version of that too. And a pretty good show. Sound, you know, can be your standard sort of bootleg sound where drums are kind of flat and dry. Overall sound not awesome, but totally, totally listenable. That is from Tarrant County Convention Center. It's the entire September 5th show from 77 and parts basically it sounds like the end of the September 4th show as sort of your bonus tracks at the end of disc 2. Crazy Nights Demos and Outtakes 1987 also on Zodiac from Kiss single CD 15 tracks you get five Paul Stanley publishing tape songs from 1988 as bonus tracks on that guy. Here's a great looking one from Genesis West Palm Beach 1975 soundboard. January 10th of 75, so early into 75. Convention Hall in Florida. Virtuoso is the label. Double CD, Lamb Lies Down on Broadway tour. That looks like a killer. Queen, another upgrade for Houston 1977 soundboard. This one from Wardort's two CDs. We're at the Summit, December 11th of 77. A couple from Ozzy. I already told you about this on the Sabbath update but a new press, second press of Definitive Tribute on Zodiac. Two CDs, you get the popular, well-known Cleveland show from May 11th of 81 on disc one. Disc two, Montreal from July 28th of 81. And a lot of these copies out there have a bonus option, six string God DVD. Covers Randy, I think 78 to 81. So that's a great one. Another repress, another second press. Ozzy Us Festival 83, the complete soundboard, single CD, and Zodiac again. This is from May 29th of 1983 in San Bernardino, California. Bonus DVD-R of the same show. Uh, it's not every song from the show though, so the DVD is a little shorter than the uh, CD. I already got this guy and it's pretty cool. I guess Jake's first sort of appearance with him, as far as I know, right? I think my favorite off of this 
is hearing Jake do Ferries wear boots. Uh, not that it's anything totally special, just, you know, sort of, I think, the only th time I've heard him play this on a soundboard concert, so that's kind of cool. Cream Wheels of Fire, UK Original Mono, title on this one, single CD. The source is the first pressing of the mono vinyl album. I'm not sure what label, if any, this is. It's only the studio album, not the live material from disc two or album two, so, but a pretty cool little issue here. The Stone Steel Wheels, early demos, two CDs, no label on this one, considered a remaster or upgrade. I hadn't heard of this before, so I obviously just missed it, and looks like a good one. Some Mike Oldfield for you. Complete Irish Bells, two CDRs, were at RDS Main Hall in Dublin, 1980. The Police, couple cool soundboard titles. Toronto, 1980 soundboard, right? Massey Hall, November 24th of 80. Two CDs on Wardour. It's an upgrade, Zenyatta Mandata Tour. Then there's Montreal, 1983 soundboard, single CD. Again on Wardour, again an upgrade, but it is an incomplete show at 65 minutes. Rod Stewart, Budokan, 1981. FM Live Special, 2024 remaster. This is a show from Tokyo, May 12th of 1981. Bob Dylan, that's right, Bob Dylan. I'm gonna give him a little love, throw his name into the hat. This one does look kinda of cool. And Bob Dylan and the Rolling Thunder Review with Joan Baez and Roger McGuinn. Austin, 1976 soundboard, two CDs, Municipal Auditorium, May 12th of 76 on that double disc. Don't have a label written down for that one. Couple cool Floyd titles. Division Bell, Endless River, Outtakes, single CD, Own Own is the label. This, again, is a repress. I do have this original one. If you like Endless River, this is kind of cool, some outtakes from it. And the production's awesome on it, so worry, no worries about the sound quality or anything here. And some material from Division Bell also. So not sure if there's really any outtakes necessarily, just songs that, you know, just out, uh, different takes of songs that made those albums, so. Uh, like I said, repress on that one. And a 12 CD title from Floyd called Another 12 Bar Blues. The best audience and some soundboard shows from six different shows in 1970. Late summer, fall tour, only pressing 300 of those. If you're interested, grab that one fast. And I don't have a label for that one either. The Stones again, another one of these huge sets. This one is 17 disc set, all audience though and very good to excellent is what they claim on the sound. 40 Licks, US, Canada Tour 2002, Arena and Stadium Shows, another one limited to 300 copies only. Roxy Music, Glasgow 2001, FM broadcast from June 14th, 2001. Virtuoso is your label, it's another upgrade. We're in Scotland, there's a bonus CDR option of the BBC version of the broadcast from a rebroadcast in 2024. And there are four songs that aren't on the main show. So the bonus CDR sounds like a good option to get. Purple, another repress, a second press of their California Jam reel to reel soundboard. Two CDs on Darker Than Blue. And it's from, of course, their Cal Jam appearance, April 6th of 74. I still got this guy to get into. I listened to a little bit of it. Man, I've had this for like over a year. I don't know why I haven't played this more yet. I, I dipped into it and I actually put the cell phone back on it to kind of flag it so I could stand that on the shelf to remind my ass to get that on. So, Daryl Hall and John Oates, Saratoga 1977. Two CDRs, Saratoga Performing Arts Center, Trials the label. It's from June 18th of 77. Another Wings title, Band on the Run, Jeff Emmerich tapes, newly discovered rough mix tapes from the master reel. Two CDs on Merseyside, alternate mixes, and some of the isolated sound effects used for the album. That other Kiss title I was telling you about, here we go. Monsters of Rock, 1988, Donington. Collector's Edition, it's called. Two CDRs and one DVDR. Mostly audience, except for disc one. That's from an FM broadcast. August 20th, 1988. 40 minutes, that guy is. Disc two is the complete show, audience source. DVD, complete show, audience source again. And one more Aerosmith title. Beyond All Things, this looks like a repress from an older title. I think it goes back to 2001. Bondage Music, 
Orlando, Florida, June 14th, 2001. George Harrison, All Things Must Pass Sessions 2. So part two, I guess. Three CDs, Mr. Claudel, more sessions from that 1971 album from George. And finally, wrapping up the CDs, the title of all titles and probably the biggest title of this year, The Who, Live at Leeds, Multi-Track Master, two CDs, University of Leeds, February 14th, 70, complete and uncut, restored running order, restored between song chatter, and supposedly a somewhat of a slight upgrade on the sound, although that's debatable talking to different people about it. And this is, it's actually up to a fourth pressing already, even though it was only introduced a month or two ago. So doing gangbusters, The Who live at Leeds. I had a shot at that and I passed up and now I'm not sure why, but for, for another day, you know how it goes. Now some vinyls to tell you about, I already told you about this one on the Sabbath update. We got some Ozzy on vinyl. Broken Chains and Broken Rules were at the Met Center, Bloomington, Minnesota, January 15th of 82, of course with Randy Rhodes. Yellow or Red, take your choice, 180 gram final, double album. Casino Records, if I didn't already mention that. Another soundboard vinyl title, this one from Zeppelin, All the Warmth We Can Find, three albums. This is live from Hanover, Germany, June 24th, 1980, trifold cover, 250 each of these turquoise or red all right so there's your 42 bootleg titles for the past month month and a half since the last update out of japan two vinyl there at the end 40 cds before that 40 titles i should say so all right so it's just some stuff i've been listening to the last few weeks i don't think i've done an update like this for about six weeks so going back that far maybe even a little further but some of these I haven't shown you at all yet in the first place. Kind of refraining from showing you new things until I have had, it, had a chance to digest it. Give you a little bit of an opinion and some feedback on it. So, The Moody Blues Live at the Spectrum 1970. Got this a few months ago. Laid around a little bit. Got to listen to it finally. Uh, sound quality on this kind of stinks. It's soundboard. And it does sound soundboard. Just really sort of distant sound. I'll say fair, you know, at best on this. You're gonna be tinkering with your treble bass, your equalizer to listen to this guy. And it sounds like a decent enough show, all right? 1970, pretty, pretty much kind of like a high water mark in a way for them. And uh, it starts out with Gypsy. There's some really good performances on here, but it's all just sort of marred by this, like I said, average at best sound, but Moody Blues Live at the Spectrum. I'll give it another spin. It's not garbage, but it's one of the worst sounding soundboards you know, you can probably possibly get, but try to change it up every now and then from all the metal and hard rock. And here's some classic rock from 74, Foghead, Boogie Outlaws. I think we're in New Haven, Connecticut, 1974. Stereo soundboard recording on trial and not a real long show. I don't know if it's ran 50 minutes or so, like something like that. So, uh, but a good one, just what you'd expect from Foghead at this point, your pre you know, full for the city. So you got some older stuff, Eight Days on the Road, probably my favorite on there, and definitely delivers live. Some Fog Hat, and came with a bonus DVD of them on Don Kirshner's Rock Concert, which I haven't got a chance to, to watch yet, but that should be good stuff. That's also from 74. Some almonds, I got around to listening into one of the huge lot of things that I bought a couple months back. I did a whole separate episode on it and got a nice juicy Ozzy Sabbath lot from eBay. I'll be showing you soon enough. But uh, this one was from Raleigh, North Carolina and really looked like the most unimpressive artwork. This is a 1994 CD from Italy, bootleg CD obviously. And like I said, the artwork and everything about it just looked so sort of bare bones and you know kind of cheap. But the sound quality on this is the best of all those CDs I got, even better than the Instant Lies and such. And what was this gig was recorded for the second set official live album and the only song used from that rally north carolina gig is in memory of elizabeth reed which as you can see here it's actually the hype sticker for the album itself so that tells you something about that performance a great enough one to make the official live album and what's cool about the uh, bootleg the one from 94 here which they call southern harmony is that that song's not even on here. So a bunch of other tunes from the same gig and you don't repeat the one you already have on the official 
live app. So really good show. I can't say it's mind blowing or anything, but it's solid. This is some good years for, for the almonds, you know, early nineties, 89 to about 96. You know, I think they're really solid. Now here's a concert I was really looking forward to. I have all this older almonds, early seventies, now a decent amount of early nineties and such. Uh, don't have a lot of this late seventies, early eighties stuff, you know, the first reunion, I guess you'd call it. So I was really looking forward to this show from 79 because there's gray market releases of it that are chopped up. So this was going to be the full show. Project Zip on this label, they're CDRs. They, they specialize in CDR soundboards, shows that aren't on bigger labels. So this one, I figured, wow, this is going to be great. I think there are some sets out there on the gray market that do have this whole show but they're kind of mixed up in with other shows and such. Really want, was looking forward to this as a standalone. However, the sound on this is just crap. It's basically like bad discs. I should probably try to send it back. However, for all I know, it's from Disc Japan because I, I think I got this thing like last summer or something, last fall. Probably too late to send it back, but just unlistenable, you know, and I've got some tolerance with listening to bootleg since the 80s. It's just basically bad burns here. So there you go. Sometimes you get burned and I was such a shame, you know. I'll, I'll hold on to this in case I run into some other version of this concert. Plop it in here with this nice artwork and all. But uh, the gig, I haven't even told you yet. Uh, again, New Haven, Connecticut. This one, December 31st of 79, so New Year's Eve, 79 into 80. Unfortunately, once in a while you do get some clunkers. Now. Here's one I just picked up sort of spur of the moment. Bee Gees, Merchants of Dream. Another one of these older titles that came back in print recently. I snagged it. It did sell out quick like I thought. I'm not a huge like 60s, early 70s Bee Gees fan, but I, I like that stuff. Do I need two CDs full of rarities? Uh, probably not. It was just one of these sort of spontaneous buys, you know. And Polar Bear Records is the title as the uh, label on this one. And actually, I could see that there were going to be multiple takes of the same songs. That can be annoying. I went for it anyway. I'm kind of glad I did. What I didn't realize is that disc one, I don't know, 12 or 15 outtakes and rarities and things. Then it gets into a, an entire concert, about 10 song concert from the BBC. Disc two is kind of the same. You have about 10 or 15 rarities and outtakes and things like that. Some are multiple takes. Uh, but mostly not as bad on disc two with that stuff. And then at the end you get a 10 song concert. I think it's 10 songs. So really two long performances on either disc plus outtakes and rarity. So it was a lot more interesting than just 40, 50 outtakes. So I'm kind of glad I got this one. You got a, a, basically a couple of concerts mixed in with the uh, outtakes and stuff. All right, so there's some CDs I got a while back. Here's some things more recently, of course, the last review was for the uh, DVD of this show, Van Halen Tokyo Dome 2013, but I also talk about the CDs towards the end of that review, if you want to hear about that. Same set list as the video, so nothing new there. Check out the review for Tokyo Dome 2013 Van Halen. I also covered the deluxe edition of Different Kind of Truth in that, the last video I did, so. Now, of course, the last review before that one, I think for CDs anyway, was Scorpion's Definitive Costa Mesa, 1984 soundboard, really good one. Gave this another play after I did that review. Really solid, good, good concert by the Scorps. Now, you know, I bought this thing like a year ago and it sat on my shelf for half a year. And then I got into this probably this past fall. The Who Live in San Diego DVD, Pro Shot, October 26th on the, uh, final tour and since they never toured again ever I had to jump into the fray with uh, the New Jersey 82 soundboard double CD and this one is on what label with this guy Wardour is the label for this one I believe man even with glasses this stuff's getting tough to read uh, good one though I picked up this show as opposed to there's another one out there from this tour but I forget if it's Portland maybe or somewhere uh, this one has Athena on it not that that's an awesome song, but I just kind of wanted the one with the most uh, It's Hard material on there. So this one sounds great. You know, a lot of times these bootlegs, they can suffer in the, the bottom end area. Not this one. 
you know, thunder fingers, make sure that's not a, not a situation with this guy. So the Who, New Jersey, 1982 soundboard. Uh, I'm only halfway through disc one on that, so just getting into that. And then last but not least, I need to get a little more into this one before going forward with a review, but it is coming hopefully very soon. Rockford, 1982, Kiss, soundboard, New Year's Eve of 82, so right into 83 with this one. Uh, so far from what I've heard, really cool show, but it does have its ups and downs. We'll talk about that in the review. And guys, that's going to do it. That's your bootleg update, all your new stuff out of Japan in the last couple months. 42 titles, bunch of new stuff I've been listening to also. So, All right, that's going to do it for now, guys. I'll catch you all later. Everyone have a great friggin' day.